Saxon Advanced Mathematics, Lesson 6. Uh, we have three different topics. They all have to do with equations. This is all algebra focused. The first topic is fractional equations. Hopefully this is all review. Well, I know it is because I know you guys all did Saxon last year. Um, so we were asked to solve something like this. 4 over 7. Okay, what we have here is an equation with fractions. Oh, clever name, right? Um, the rule here is that when we have an equation, we can make the de de denominators go completely away. With an expression, you can only combine. But with an equation, we can go make them go away. And the way that we do that is first we calculate the least common multiple, and then we're going to multiply every term by the least common multiple, and it will cancel out. <sighs> Excuse me. It will cancel out the denominators, and that will be a happy day. So... We look at this cute little set of least common multiples. We, um, or this cute little set of denominators, we realize that the least common multiple is gonna be 21, seven times three, times the quantity x plus two. Oh my gosh, there's nothing, there's nothing better we can do than that. As I look at that and as I ponder this in the bottom, I realize I better write a limiting statement on this, right? Because x cannot be equal to minus 2. Because this can never be allowed to be equal to 0. So I always want to note this. When I see a variable in the denominator, I have to limit my solutions thusly. Okay, so I've got a least common multiple. I'm gonna multiply this beast by every term and see what I can cancel out. I'm gonna do that in another color just because it's gonna get real messy real fast. Okay. Um, if you feel comfortable with this, it's not necessary for you to use a different color at home, but I always think it's fun and it helps. Um, it just helps your brain see important things when you use different colors like I do. That's why I do it. I want to help your brain see it, but that's up to you. Okay, I can now cancel the 7 against the 21. That's going to be a 3, and that's gone. Now I want to multiply this right away before I get confused. The wool, these two go together, four times three is 12, and then I still have the parenthetical expression, x plus two. This one, this is the one I was looking for, the x plus twos are gonna cancel, and I have three times 21, so I'll say plus 63 equals, and then here, the three cancels against the 21, it leaves me with a seven, five times seven is 35, and I still have the x plus two. Well, I still have a bit of work to do here, but I love the lack of denominator. So now I'll distribute. I always make the signs just to remind myself. 12x plus 24 plus 63 equals 35x plus 70. Beautiful. These guys can combine for like terms. That's going to be what, 87? Sometimes I just do that as a kind of a half step. I don't go all the way across. I would like to move the 12 X's this way so that I'll have a positive X value. And then I want to move the 70s like that. That cancels, that cancels. 87 minus 70 is 17 equals 23. Ugh, that's frightening. But that's my final answer. That cancels, and what I do, just for a little shorthand, is I just set my x, x equals to over there so that my answer is clear, but I don't have to keep rewriting it because it introduces errors. All right, how did you feel about that? Kind of okay, right? Let me flip to the next page. I try to get the whole problem 
in a single view because it's annoying when you can't see everything. 6.2. So, all right, ready for a little mini headache? Don't worry, I'm gonna fix it. It's a system of equations. The first equation of the two has fractions. Ready? Ready for part two of our headache? The second equation in our system, there's the fact, there's the notation to show us that we have an actual system of equations here. We're trying to find values for x and y that will make both come true. But I don't like those fractions and I don't like those decimals. So I've got a real problem here, don't I? Luckily, we have strategies to bump both clear off the page. This one, just like we just did, only it's simpler. We find an LCM, least common multiple. This time it's just seven and five, so it'll be 35. We're gonna multiply all three terms by that and our fractions will be gone. So I'll do it in red again, 35. 35, 35, all right. The seven and the 35 cancel, leave me with a five, three times five is 15, that's the X. Um, these cancel with a seven, so it's plus 14 Y. And I can quickly Multiply by 11, because I know it's going to be 350 plus 35, right? So that's going to be 385. So using my LCM, I quickly eliminated my denominators and came up with a nice, clean equation for my system. Now I'm going to do the same thing with B. Remember the rule with these is I look for the term that has the most decimal places, and I see that two of them have hundredths, so two decimal places. What I'm going to essentially do is multiply each term by 100, just like we multiplied these by 35. It's completely legal, but I can do it faster by bumping the decimal twice in every term. That will need another zero, so that will become 20, right? Bumping a decimal twice is the same thing as multiplying 100. As long as I do it the same to everybody, I'm fine. So now I get 3x minus 20y, I have to be careful because I added that zero, equals minus 37. Ha, 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 what do you think of that? Kind of cool, right? Okay, so I'm just double checking to make sure. John shows in the answer, he shows these revised equations, and I'm just checking, as I would recommend that you do, to make sure that I haven't made any mistakes in my mathematics. Yay, it's good. All right, so now I have two choices. I can either adjust, uh, let's say I want to um, eliminate, okay? Substitution works best when one of your terms with a variable is just the plain letter. I don't have any of those here. So I'm gonna look down the two columns of variables, the X's and the Y's, and I'm gonna look for um, what I can do that will be the easiest to get these pups to eliminate. 15 and three, okay, this makes me happy because three goes into 15. So if I multiply this whole puppy by minus five, every term all the way across, then these two will cancel. And I could, that, that makes me excited because one change is better than two. These two, I would have to change both top and bottom to get those Y's to cancel, wouldn't I? They, I've got the plus and minus thing going on, but 14 and 20 are not easy friends. So I would have to jiggle both of them and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to opt to eliminate the X's. I'm going to do that by multiplying the B equation by minus five. And I'm going to draw these lines just to remind me to do all three parts of that. So A stays the same. B becomes minus 15X plus 100Y, right? The 2 and then the 100 equals, now 37 by 5 
is going to be 35, 185. Okay, and that's become positive because it was negative, but I multiplied. Now, that's my new B. I'm going to copy A over again just so they're right next to each other. 15X plus 14Y equals 385. Are you excited? I am. I'm super excited. These eliminate, this becomes 114y, and this becomes, well, let's see, zero, carry the one, 16, 17, 570. We're gonna divide both sides by 114. And that looks good. Now, the question is, does 114 go into 570? Hmm, well, what I do when I'm playing around with this, yeah, it's a long division, but I'm, I, I could do it as long division, but I'm trusting John to make this come out to a pretty nice number. Five over one makes me think, it's, it's 500 and something over 100 and something. I think, well, maybe it's five, right? So I start playing around with this in my head and I start thinking, okay, what would happen if I multiplied 114 by five? Because that was my guess. Um, five times four is 20. That gives me the zero. That makes me really excited. So now what I'm going to do, I think I'm right. So I'm just going to multiply it straight out and see if my guess works. Five times four is 20. Seven, five. It does. It works. So y equals five. Yay. Nice, right? However, we're not done because we still have to solve for x. Let's try this one. In this form, we can choose any form of these we want because they're all the same. I mean, we could put it back in this if you want. I don't want to. So 3x minus 20 times 5 equals minus 37. This is 100. So I'm going to add 100 to both sides. 3x equals, let's see, what would that be? 63, right? Divide by 3. And we get x equals 21. And those are the correct answers. Yay. So the trick in this one was cleaning up our fractions and cleaning up our decimals and then working a fairly straightforward substitution problem. So easy, right? Yikes. We have jumped into the deep end of the pool for sure. Part B. There are only three parts to this one, right? Yes. And there are a total of six examples. Radical equations. So those were fractional equations. These are radical equations. So the moral of the story with fractional equations is get rid of the fractions. Use an LCM and destroy them. Radical expressions. All right, example 6.3. We have the cube root of quantity x minus 5 minus 2 equals 2. All right, the way that we solve these problems is by isolating the radical, which means we look for the radical, or sometimes we have more than one, so we look for the nastiest one. Next time we'll have two of them. We look for this little guy, and we want him to be by himself. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna send this guy packing. We'll add two to both sides, and now we've got the cube root of this wicked thing equals four, right? Okay, now we wanna get rid of the radical sign, the pig house, if you will. So what we have to do is we have to cube that. Cubing it will get rid of the cube root, but if we do it to that side, we have to do it to this side. So then we'll get x minus five equals, what's four cubed? Four times four is 16. 16 times four is 64. Wow. 
Last step, add 5. x equals 69. Now, here's the thing about these. When we raise expressions to a power like this, we sometimes will get what are called false roots or extraneous solutions. So whenever you're raising things to a power like that to cancel this out, you have to check your answer. I'm not a huge fan of checking your, my answer because you can check your answer to everything if you want. You know, like you could do a little calculation. Um, that's what the book is for. But with these, you really do need to do it because it's easy to get wrong answers. So, and sometimes we do have to eliminate them. So I'm gonna put this back in here. I want the cube root of 69 minus five. And if you subtract two, we'll equal two. This is 64. The cube root of 64 is four. Four minus two equals two. That's a check. So that tells us that we have a good answer. All right, I like it. I think this happened near the end of last year. Let's do another one that has, as I mentioned, oh, it's 6.4. I wanna be in less than 64 already. Solve is our instruction. X minus 48. All right, so with this one, we see these radicals and we're reminded, oh yeah, right, the, the trick to these is to isolate the radicals. In this case, we have two radicals, so we isolate the crazier radical. So that's this one, this one's more complex. So we're gonna subtract square root of x from both sides, goodbye. Square root of x minus 48 equals, and you can write this in either way. Let's just write it what feels sort of backwardsy, maybe. I like to put the minus sign in the middle. It's easier for me to remember it if it's kind of protected in between. All right, so we're gonna square this, and now look what we have to do. We have to square that as a binomial. Ay, ay, ay. What started out as the messy side has quickly become, oh, this is 48, sorry. Has quickly become kind of cute. And this side is about to become a monster. I'm gonna do the multiplication down here where I have a little more room. I'm saving some space to finish the problem. But we have to multiply this as a binomial. So we have to do the dance here. Eight times eight is 64. Eight times that is minus eight square root of x. She sits down, she stands up. Oh look, square root of x. And now let's see what happens here. I'm gonna write this product over here because I'm kind of out of space. Um, the two minuses become a plus and square root of x times square root of x becomes just an x. Okay, so this equals x plus, it doesn't really matter what order we write this in, plus 64 minus 16 square root of x. And I just noticed in the example, it doesn't really matter, but John uses an s and I'm using an x, all right? So if you look at this problem in your book and go, what is she talking about? I just, my brain just switched the letter. I don't like to use s's because an s looks like a five. So why would we even do that to ourselves? Okay, so now what I wanna do is swim some fish here, right? I squared both sides. I'm going to, um, I'm gonna subtract an x here, but look what happens when I subtract the x from both sides. Here, let me put this off to the side a little bit. These both cancel out. So then what I wanna do is I'm gonna subtract the 64 at the same time. So minus 112 equals, gone, gone, minus 16 square root of x. Hmm, this is looking so messy, isn't it? But we're okay. 
Because let's try this. Let's divide both sides by minus 1 minus 16. Do you think 16 goes into 112? Let's try it. I'm just going to do conventional this way. Well, it doesn't really help me. Um, but I look here. I know it's not 10 because 10 times 16 is 160. So that's too much. Mm, 6 times something has to give me a 2. 6 times 7 would give me a 2. So what if I do 16 times 7? 42. There it is. So the answer is square root of x, right, because I haven't eliminated that, equals 7. It's positive 7, right? And so now I still have to square both sides one more time. Lord have mercy. X equals 49. That's the answer. I'm not boxing it yet because I have to check it up here and make sure it's right. So now we have to check. Square root of 49 minus 48, why oh, I like that, plus square root of 49 equals 8. Let's see if it's true. This is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. Square root of 49 is 7. Look, it worked. So now I can box it. If it didn't work, I would write empty set, null set, or no solution. All three of those, they're not true for this, but if my test turned out to be false, if I came up with something that was gibberish, this would be, if the check fails, then that's how you note the answer, okay? We didn't get one of those freak children, but they do come up from time to time. Okay, enough about radical equations and isolating the radical. And for our last two problems, we're going to do systems of three linear equations. Here's the way they look. Example 6.5, and we have an A, B, and a C. So 2x plus 2y minus z, okay? What I'm very careful to do is create columns of matching variables because I want to see exactly how I'm going to um, how I'm going to eliminate these or substitute. And then the last, so this is B, and then C is the last one, and it is X minus 2Y equals 0. Okay, so I need to come up with a strategy to blend these all into each other. Okay, and what I see, I like this right here because I can see that those Z's are going to cancel without any effort at all. So my first step is going to be to add equation A plus equation B. Okay, and I'm not even going to write it over. I'm just going to add them in my head. So I'm going to get, well, not, you know, right before my eyes. Plus 5Y equals 30. The Z's cancel, right? Now, what I notice is that I can easily rewrite, this is a plain variable with no coefficient. I want to substitute that in right here. And I can easily rewrite this x equals 2y, right? So I can just add it over. And now I can rewrite this combined thing. So my second step will be to substitute in c. So I've got x equals 2y, and so I'm going to go 5 times 2y plus 5y equals 30. This is 10y, so I can say 15y equals 30, and y equals 2. 
The trickiest thing about these problems is that you have to look at your equation and, and see what you can do. My hints were I start at the top and go A to B. I see these cancel. I love it. This one, I could have eliminated once I got this down to an X plus Y, but I saw that there was no coefficient, and that is always a signal to me that substitution might be a good option. So it was the lack of numeric coefficient. I mean, there's an invisible one, but the lack of coefficient in front of that X made me think, ooh, let's substitute it in. That'll be easy. Okay, so now I've got my Y term. I have to figure out my X and my Z. I'll go to this one to figure out my X. I will use the A plus B, so it's gonna be 5X plus f five times two is 10, I did it in my head. 30, I subtract the 10, you see what I'm doing? I'm using this equation and this value for Y to solve for X. You can use any equation you want. Oh, it probably would have been easier to do that, X equals two Y. So it better be four. I did not choose the easiest one, but I got it. X equals four. And then, so I've got that as an answer. I've got that as an answer. Now what about Z? I guess I'll use this one. So two times four plus two times two minus Z equals 14. I'll write it on the other side, right? So I'm taking my two values here, plugging into this one, solving. So 14 equals 8 plus 4 minus z. I subtract 12 from both sides. 2 equals minus z. Uh, divide by minus 1 or however you want to look at that. And I get z equals minus two. Remember that these three numbers represent an ordered triple, just like we have ordered pairs when we solve two-part systems of equations. This is a three-part, so the best way to write our answer is as an ordered triple. Four, two, minus two, in alphabetical order. That is the best form of the answer. Yay. Okay, the last problem I will do in a part two, it's another system of equations, so I will do that in a quick little follow-up video to come after this one. Thank you, I will see you for that in a minute.